What's shaking, Booktube? My name's Cam, and for whatever reason, I've decided that today I'll be telling you about the first story I ever wrote. This is a fantasy story that I wrote when I was about seven or eight, and just to reel you in, just to let you know how great of a story it is, it features a celebrity that you may or may not know. Ah, oh, shit, I can't believe I'm actually going to be putting this out on the internet. Just roll the intro. First story I ever wrote. It's no secret that I wanted to be a writer from a very young age and I think I decided at a very young age that I could start early so I decided to basically put the games, imaginary games that I was playing with my friends into an actual novel. In retrospect, I mean I don't have it here unfortunately, I really wish I did but I just don't. In retrospect, it was probably no more than like 10,000 words, lucky if it was even that long because, yeah, again, I was a little kid. Even though I read a lot, even though I was a total bookworm, I honestly don't think it would have been that long. Just to give you a little bit of a, a taste, just so you know how great of a story it is that you're going to be hearing about right now, it was actually based around uh, my three friends and me, so I was in the story. So, And you know when authors write themselves into the story, it's always going to be great, so you know. Alright, so anyway, here's, here's how it went. I'll just walk you through it from the start to the end. Brace yourselves, buckle in, get yourself a cup of tea, because you're about to hear the, the best story ever told. You're about to hear the story of your life. story begins in a school playground. There's me and my three friends. So obviously it's Cam, and then there's Yanni Chababa. That, that's his real name, Yanni Chababa. My mum used to call him Hubba Bubba Kid, which is a bubble gum. There's Yanni Chababa, then there's Henry. That name may be familiar if you've read my newest book, and there's a good reason for that. I'll be going into that in a moment. And then there was a girl, Ashley. So yeah, there was, there was four of us. Anyway, we're in the playground, and because we were such cool, rebellious kids, at least in the story, um, we were chilling up near the abandoned block of uh, school classrooms, and then basically a few paragraphs into the story, Ashley starts having a fit and then she turns into this werewolf creature. And then we're all like, you know, the rest of us are kind of freaking out and we're running away and she's trying to chase us and eat us and shit. This is when we discover our powers. So Henry's power was that he could control plants. So he makes himself a little dome thing accidentally and he's like, oh my God, I can't believe I got powers. Wow. And Yanni turns out to have like super strength because he's a slayer. And to me, that meant he had super strength, super speed, all those kind of physical attributes. So yeah, he could do that. And me, I was of course the most powerful one because I was a bit of a, because I'm a little bit of a sociopath. I had the power to manipulate objects with my mind, levitation and all that junk. But anyway, that was that was the beginning of it. So that happens, and then Ashley ends up turning back to her normal self. And we're like, you know what the hell, how did this happen? And for whatever reason, we all remembered simultaneously that we'd gone to a carnival that had made us sick just uh, prior to that school day. So in the very next chapter, we go back to the carnival and we find the tent that we had wandered into in the first place. In the story itself, I didn't even explain what had happened in that tent or why we were drawn to it, but we go into the tent and there's an old man in there called Marty or something like that. And anyway, the cool thing here, and I mean genuinely cool, no sarcasm there, is that Marty, the old man, is actually, physically anyway, descriptive-wise, he is exactly the same as Griffin from my Architects of the Gifted series, which is the, the books I've actually self-published recently that I'm hoping are good, better than this story. So Marty ended up kind of becoming Griffin, and Henry is also in um, Architects of the Gifted, uh, obviously I'm much older, he's not a kid in Architects of the Gifted, but it's not really the same character because the personalities are completely different, and the descriptions, it's just the name and the power is really all I drew from that, just because I don't know why, I, he wasn't even the closest of my friends, I just for some reason that character, at least the name of the power, felt it felt good enough to transfer over to into this story. Keep in mind, this is a story I wrote when I was a tiny kid and it just evolved and changed to the point where it's my baby now, like my actual story I'm most proud of. It did evolve into this, so I suppose I have 
this crappy story to be thankful for. Anyway, going back into it, we go into the tent. Marty's in there and we showcase our powers and he explains, Yes, I made you sick and I gave you those powers, but for a good reason. There's a war coming. Of course. Of course there's a war coming. Like any smart elderly man who has the power to bestow gifts on people, he chose for tiny little children. So anyway, um, we obviously, as you do, all told our parents we're going on a camp so that we could go live and train with a strange old man in his house. Yep, that happened. Not too sure what my um, what my mum would have been thinking when I showed her the story, but she smiled and told me it was nice, so she's a good liar at least. Anyway, we trained there for however amount of time, and of course, again, going back to me being a sociopath, Marty told me that I was the strongest out of them um, with my powers, and we all obviously developed, got better. We got cool costumes, kind of like X-Men leather one pieces, so that was pretty sweet. And then this is where the celebrity cameo comes into it, and this is so fucking stupid, I have no idea what was going through my mind. I guess I was really into the original Spider-Man movies at the time. Anyway, Marty, for no reason whatsoever, reveals his true self like it would mean anything to us. And he's actually Tobey Maguire. Yes. Yeah. Tobey Maguire from Spider-Man. And I don't mean he looked like Tobey Maguire. I mean, it was. Tobey Maguire was in the story for no reason. So anyway, we go into the garage of this old man's house. He whips the sheet off four motorcycles, which kids at that age would not have been able to ride, but I rode it in there anyway. We rode the motorcycles, which had the technology to take us through a portal. So yeah, we, we rode through a portal and that was us beginning our quest. Straight out of the gates, as soon as we get out of the portal, there's a, it's like a graveyard thing and I can't remember why, but we had to fight zombies there. So we fight zombies and then we're traveling through a snowy landscape where we nearly starve to death. There's, there's a lot of little things happen in this whole area of the story, but again, it's so long ago, I can't remember. I really wish I had the story, just so I would read it out to you. I'd do like an audiobook reading, a dramatic reading. God, that would be fantastic. But anyway, we yeah, we nearly starved to death. We don't meet any other characters, so that in itself was a bit sloppy. And then we eventually make it to the forest we need to get to. We get to this big forest, um, which again did carry over a little bit into Architects of the Gifted, which is funny enough. Just talking about this is kind of, I'm seeing all these links that I didn't before. Keep in mind, this isn't scripted. I don't have a script there and I didn't rehearse this beforehand. I'm just trying to remember it on camera. So we get to this forest and we all inexplicably <coughs> lose our powers. And then the forest catches on fire for some reason that I can't remember. And it's up to me and, is it? I can't remember, it was up to one of us again. It was probably me, just because that's how I was writing everything about myself. Everything eventful had to be um, circulating me. So anyway, I had to find this gem in the middle of the forest and break it so that we could have our powers back. And then straight after that, there's an army coming towards us of some kind of creature. For whatever reason. There was no explanation in this story what the army was, why there was an army who the actual main villain was or why, the, the, there was no, there was no reason. You just had to go into the story just expecting shit. Anyway, the, the army arrives, we all face the fact that we're going, we might die and we go to war, us four little seven or eight year olds. Of course, my three friends all go down after a little while, unfortunately, and it's left up to me to save the day. I have to fight some big, massive, bad villain. And, um, I am remembering a few of the monsters that could be compared to the Wendigo in Architects of the Gifted, just because I remember one, I remember writing one uh, monster that I was really proud of, and I shit you not, this was a long, long, long before the Hobbit movie came out with Azog, the Defiler. And it was a big troll looking thing, missing his arm, and he had a metal kind of blade claw thing coming out, like as of the Defiler, but keep in mind that wasn't in the books, and that movie hadn't even come out yet, so premonition. But yeah, anyway, um, we go to war, I end up having this big fight, and 
then I discover I can fly, so I'm fighting with the main villain. I don't really remember much about the main villain, sorry, but we're fighting in the air, and there's lightning, and flashes, and we're throwing shit at each other, and it's just, I end up winning, of course, and just remembering, I think the fight scene would have been pretty not well written shit, but um, the idea sounded, now I talk about it, sounds kind of cool, but the whole story, man, was just, oh. Anyway, yeah, that's it. You are, uh, you are very welcome for, you're welcome for that story. I hope you like it. Book will be coming out next month. Probably not. If you like this video, and let's be honest, as if you didn't, uh, give the video, a th <laughs> show me some love, give me a thumbs up. All my social media links are below. Check out some of my other videos, and if you aren't already, join the Wolfpack and subscribe. And if you are in the Wolfpack, I'll see you in the next video. Catch ya. I just want to say thanks for watching this. I know. Feel free to leave a comment telling me how shit that story is. I can take it.